Well, good afternoon and welcome to another edition of a Dialogue with the Dean. It's again a, a Zoom edition, if you will, uh, and it's our opportunity uh, to continue to bring uh, you, our alumni and friends, updates from campus. Before we start, I do want to remind everyone that if you have any questions at all throughout the video, please feel free to make a comment here and we'll be sure to come back and, and address your comments and respond. Well, today it's a pleasure to have with us Dr. Beth McCuskey. Beth is the Vice Provost for Student Life for Purdue University. In her role, she focuses on supporting student success and is at work developing ways to engage Purdue students in opportunities that enrich their campus experience and strengthen their academic, professional, and social success. Beth, thank you for joining us today. I know uh, it's a, a busy time on campus, and I appreciate you taking just a little bit of time to share uh, with our alumni and friends some of the things that are going on on campus, uh, particularly as it relates to student life this fall. Well, thank you, Dean Barker. It is awesome to be here today and just to share a few, few comments and thoughts with you, your alumni. Um, as you might imagine, Purdue is very, very different this fall. Um, but as much as it's different, there's still a lot of things that are that are the same. And I think the thing, the big thing that's the same is our students' passion for wanting to be here and for connecting into campus. So out of the gate, I mean, we essentially had to flip pretty much everything we do. We had to look at the densification of our residence halls. So getting fewer people um, in the buildings is a way to, um, to minimize spread of the disease. We had to change how we fed people. So instead of our glorious dining courts where you can go back for multiple servings and sit with 50 of your closest friends around a giant dining table, you have to pretty much pick up your food and take it outside and eat it in another location. A lot of those um, are in the, in the residence halls themselves. People just take the food back to the room and hang out with their small group of friends. Um, in terms of activities, uh, we've, we've had a lot of um, kind of process around how you have safe activities. So things like food, um, people can still have food, but it has to be, it has to meet certain criteria. Um, size of events, we, we are um, only approving smaller events events, um, use of facilities. So all of our facilities have um, the de-densification plans. So we, we don't want to exceed those plans for any given space. Um, and it, so there's just a lot of things that have been put in place to manage safety. Um, the, the beauty, I, I mean, I think in terms of our activities and the formal things that we're programming, um, even some of the things in the residence halls, I, I think the stuff seems to be working um, and you know where we're, where we're seeing things that are a, a little bumpy are where people are hanging out with groups of friends too close to each other and not wearing their mask. Uh, it's been um, a, a, a real thrill uh, even yet amidst all this to, to walk outside and hear particularly sounds of music. Uh, <laughs> the, the PMO groups, the specialty groups, uh, the Purdue bands uh, and uh, have been out doing sort of pop-up concerts here and there. There was a group on the steps of Hubdi last week. Uh, tell us a little bit about you know what what we've done to perhaps allow students uh, to have some fun on on campus. And now that football season is starting, or well, and certainly by the time folks uh, see this, will have started. How we're handling that? Absolutely. So. Uh, Purdue musicians are, there, there are a ton of them, and you may know we don't have a music school here, so our student musicians are doing it because they love it, not because they're majoring in it or, or want to pursue that as a career. And dance and orchestras and PMO are phenomenal places for students to continue to practice their talents. We also have uh, our cultural organizations, for example, that have lots of ways to engage, as well as just a ton of other student organizations. So we thought one of the ways to activate campus, get people um, really just get the energy up as well as get our students who love to perform um, opportunities to do so was to, to really try to target little concerts, little mini concerts. So we might have a tiny little jazz ensemble meeting in a certain place on campus. Um, we've had PMO concerts on the steps of Hubdi. Um, the marching band will do a um, do rounds um, every Friday, just trying to, you know, again, play the music and get people excited about it. And one of the coolest things we did, and honestly, I thought I'd get laughed out of the room for suggesting it. 
Uh, we put pianos under tents uh, in three different locations on campus, and they are so heavily used. Um, our students who love to play get to go out and play. Um, sometimes there are other people hanging around listening. It's just incredible. I, I went home last night um, and under the bell tower, we have one of these pianos and there was also a saxophonist out um, playing a little jazz. So it's just so cool to see um, just how these spaces can be activated through sound and music, which, which just helps spread joy. Um, we are sponsoring some, as you know, I'm sure, we, we can't go into the stadium unless we're related to the players um, or coaching, um, but we are sponsoring some watch parties to try to get people together, kind of root for the, the team, um, do so in a safe way, have a little bit of food, a little bit of fun, doing it outdoors to, to maximize that, that safety because obviously that's a little safer environment than indoors, um, and just trying to root for that Boilermaker win tomorrow. We've learned a lot this fall, uh, and now it, uh, we're planning for spring. What changes do you anticipate for spring semester? So we, when we've been talking about, um, I, I mentioned how out of the gate, we had to make a lot of changes to really how we do our work. Um, we, we, we structured that as kind of the, the tightest of, of how we wanted to operate. So we, we went with full safety protocol um, to, to be as safe as possible. Now that we're kind of in the steady place, we feel like we can dial it back a little bit. And so what we're talking about doing isn't turning the valve in a huge way. It's just little nudges of, of improving things. So for example, a little bit of seating in the dining courts. Um, we opened up some recreational opportunities outside. We started the year without any intramurals, for example. So opening up more activities in that space and, and working with our medical advisory team who has, who has that background to assess the risk levels of these different things that we're trying to do. So we're only um, dialing up where we can do so safely. But we do believe we can offer more opportunities to engage and that's, that's kind of what we're trying to do. And so as we think about those opportunities, uh, particularly uh, for students to engage with each other and to engage with, with faculty, obviously the classroom is a space where we'd really like them to engage with us. Uh, but, uh, and you've mentioned some, are there other uh, thoughts or other activities or ways that students are engaging on campus with each other or, or with our, our faculty and staff? So our, our learning communities are still happening. These are spaces in our residence halls where um, faculty work with um, the students who take courses together. And so it's nice because they have built in study support, study groups, and there's alignment between the, the courses that are in their community so that they can see how um, one, one um, type of course might affect another. So that cross-disciplinary kinds of things. So that, that's still happening, still alive and well. Of course, we're just socially distancing a little more. Um, I think there's opportunities too in advisory roles. We have lots of faculty who work with our student organizations and help them there. Um, these connections are really, really crucial for, for students to have that, um, have that connection back into their faculty role. Um, and, and really just in a variety of different ways. Um, I, one, I have an advisory council and it's interesting because um, three, three of your students, Dean Barker, are on my council and they're all um, second year in, in the PharmD program. They all came in together um, and they're amazing, amazingly astute and, and weigh in quite a bit. And, um, you know, I, I think the student perspective is that our faculty are really um, things are much more humanized during COVID. People are giving a lot more grace with how they interact. And um, the students really love that, that, that they can talk to their faculty members, that there's support for just helping us all, right? Helping us all get through all of this. So I think those connections are crucial. And, and I think every, every, it's a heavy lift all over the place. And it's just nice to see that and hear it straight forward from our students. Agreed. Well, part of uh, this is designed to be a bit of a dialogue, and maybe you've got a, a question for me. Yeah. Well, I'm curious, how, how are you engaging students in your college, Dean Barker? Yeah, so first and foremost, you know, our students are interacting uh, in their, their classes. Uh, we are still having a significant number of in-person uh, classes and activities, uh, still doing group projects, but again, doing so in the context of, of safe, measures, always wearing masks, keeping uh, their, their distance as much as, as they can, utilizing uh, you know, PPE to protect each other 
uh, as they go forward. One of the things we uh, instituted across all three years of the PharmD curriculum this year was what we call a wellness specific labs. And, and so our, our skills labs, our pharmacy skills labs actually now have embedded wellness activities. Every student now is, is filling out what we call a, a mental health action plan. It, it's an assessment of where they are and, and what their stressors are and, and what they will do if, if they sort of begin to sense that some of those stressors are beginning to overtake them. And so getting them to think proactively about wellness and what they ought to be doing, yeah. not just studying all the time, but having those outlets to your point uh, 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 that I'll give them the release, whether uh, it's uh, it, um, athletic activity, going to the co-rec, going to the gym, musical activities, whatever it is that, that they're engaged in, in those activities. The other uh, way our students have been highly engaged uh, this fall, and I've been very, very proud of them, is through service activities. And the big one for us has been the flu shot clinics. We gave about 20,000 flu shots over the course of about nine clinic days. Uh, and our students were right there, front and center, uh, assisting pharmacists and providing the actual uh, shots when they were when they're trained to do so in, in the latter years. And so, uh, a big, big activity for pharmacy this this uh, fall has been around flu shots, uh, and obviously a, a majorly important thing for us. One of the things the students have begun to do is to utilize new tools to engage with each other. They're using GroupMe. Uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as an app to send positive messages to each other, to your point where, where I think folks are reaching out to one another in new and creative ways, uh, showing you know, and the, the right word is grace uh, uh, and, and kindness to one another. There's a lot of things that we've picked up, you know, that the students are doing now with each other, for each other, utilizing uh, the di digital tools that we have available. Now, we do want them to get back together uh, from time to time and, and, and just do some recreational things. And so we're planning a, a, a third, the third year of PharmD class. Uh, we're going to do a, a class picnic, I think, uh, outdoors here. We've gotten an, an approved event. So uh, we, 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 we're doing all of the things necessary to keep it safe. And we want to host similar events for other classes uh, in, in, the, in the program. I mean, one of the things that we tout here is that the, the, it is the Purdue Pharmacy family and the disconnects that we've experienced as a result of the pandemic have, have really challenged us in that regard, whether it be our connections with our students or certainly our connections with our alumni who may be watching. And, and we, we miss those connections deeply as a, as a pharmacy family. Uh, the fourth year PharmD students who are the ones that are out on rotations away from campus, they actually meet monthly at the end of every rotation period, either virtually or in some cases in person using safe social distancing practices. So we're, again, we're trying to keep them connected back to campus. We use a, a weekly newsletter now that is personalized to each class uh, and has content that is created by the, what we call the class wellness ambassadors. So there are embedded members of each class that that are responsible for some wellness activities within the class. And then we, as a college, are gathering virtually once a week, uh, and we call it Take a Breath Thursday. And there's, it's just a reflective time for us uh, on Thursday mornings to be together. And so we're tr trying to find new and creative ways uh, to engage the students, the faculty, the staff across the college uh, as we continue to try, and, uh, again, safe ways that we can do these things, sometimes in person, sometimes virtually, and, and uh, just maintain those connections and engagements. And, and I think it's been really successful so far. We still miss the, the regular routine of, of being together, but uh, I, I'm very proud of the way our, our faculty, staff, and students have come together to create these new opportunities. I am not surprised. I, I know that your college has always focused on mental health and, and the mental health of your students, and, and that is very clear in all of the things that you're doing. And it's interesting too, one of your students said the other night at our advisory council that um, it's, 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 all about, it's all about that grace in terms of how we're handling things now, as well as let's let this be one of those things we take forward post COVID, so. I hope so. Well, Beth, thanks for spending a few minutes with me today. Those that are watching, please comment on the video if you have questions or if you have topics you'd like to see us discuss in the future. Uh, as always, a thank you for watching. Stay connected with us. We'll see you next month. As always, hail Purdue and boiler up. Boiler up. Thank you.